Okay, guys, so if you check the Google Classroom lately, uh, you'll see that there's a new assignment in there. That assignment is to replace the test that you were supposed to take during class today on your independent reading book. To be honest, this is a bit more of a challenge. It is a better assessment of what you've read and taken away from the text. So when you go into the classroom, you are going to see uh, an assignment. And you know, it says independent reading, so my test is due next Friday by 11.59 p.m. So you'll have this weekend to do it. Uh, I don't think you'll have a lot of class time because the laptops are being used by other classes, but I will try to get at least one full day for uh, you having the laptops. So I'm hoping to do that uh, this week, by the end of this week or early next week, and I'll let you know for sure tomorrow. So in order to access the Google Form uh, template, you want to go into your classroom. Oh, I'm sorry, no, into the drive. I'm saying that wrong. And then you're going to go here where it says shared with me. And you're going to see the uh, Google Form that says last name, comma, first name. Click on that, and you're going to click on these three dots here, and you're going to make a copy. You're now going to do your actual test of this particular form. You're going to create your own form. So you're going to click Make a Copy. And once you click Make a Copy, you're going to rename your form. So I made my own copy. I renamed it with my last name, comma first name. Your title is going to be different from mine. It's going to be based on whatever book you read, whether it's To Kill a Mockingbird or I Know When, Cage Bird Sings, The Other Westmore, Snowfalling in the Spring. Whatever your independent reading book title is, you will use. I'm going to use Raisin in the Sun as a model. So I've titled mine A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hainsbury. I'm going to, I changed this to be A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hainsbury. Um, you are then going to go through and fill out the template. Okay. And the template is in sections. Part one is plot. Okay. Um, and that's from the beginning of the novel. So you have taken the time to go through this checklist first and it tells you to divide the pages as evenly as possible into three sections so basically you want to take however many number of pages there are and divide them by three and then you're going to chunk it down into three sections so that when you create your test you have questions from the beginning of your independent reading the middle and the end. That's one that I will be looking at carefully. That's a criteria I will be looking at carefully. So for instance, part one, um, if I were doing this on a raisin in the sun, I might ask a simple setting question, where does the play take place? I typed out my question. I'm going to put that I can find the answer to that question on page 24. If you miss doing this, this is an important part, you will lose points. Okay? So uh, please make sure you put where the page numbers can, where you can find the right answer. Yes, that is purposeful. I want you to not just go on to you know, Google and try to find a test that's already been created. Uh, it will be fairly easy for me to realize if you've done that. Uh, I'm going to be looking carefully at the pages and making sure that your question goes along with a particular page. I also want the questions in chronological order. So if you, you're going to start with you know, one of the first pages and then go in order from there. And you shouldn't take questions that are all around the same general area. They should span a good amount of pages so that I can see that you've read the entire book. Uh, so part one is for beginning of the text, part two is for the middle, part three is for the end. You need 10 questions per section, which is not a lot when you think about it. Um, part four 
it is when you have to start doing inference type questions. Those are critical thinking type questions that are hard to come up with. And you really have to put thought in. Again, I tried to design this so you couldn't just go on Google and try to find a test that was already created for your novel. I am not as ignorant to think that that's not a possibility. So I've designed this purposefully so it's really hard to do that. You have to go through and you have to find moments in the text, again, from beginning, middle, end, and you need to find passages that you think are particularly important in terms of understanding a character's personality, understanding the conflict, understanding the theme about dreams or race and gender that the text is sending. Again, I would like to, these to go in chronological order by page. They need to be properly cited. So what this will look like, a question like this will look like, you know, I took Walter saying, I'm a giant surrounded by ants, ants who can't even understand what the giant is talking about, page 85. And so there's your prompt, there's your citation, and your question that you're asking your student that you're creating this test for is based on this passage, what can readers infer about Walter? And I've given four choices. You will come up with your choices based on your novel, your passage. I've also given what I feel is the best answer. Okay. And I will be, again, looking at the page numbers. So I don't want to see all of your citations about making inferences on the same pages or series of pages. Um, you have five that you need to do. So you have three beginning, middle, end. Some of them, if they're really important, they probably are going to happen at the beginning or towards the end. So you might have, um, or I'm sorry, towards the middle and end. So you might have two for the middle and two for the end and one for the beginning. Um, post questions to the classroom as you go through. If you get stuck, if you have a question, chances are if you have a question about the assignment, other people have the same question, and I can answer them all in one spot. So please post questions um, about the assignment right in the classroom. So you would just add a class comment. So if you're confused about anything, please post there. Okay. So part five is the literary devices. Again, you're going to choose five passages from the text that contain a literary device. Okay, and I'm going to give you the link to, or actually I put it here, I'm going to put it also on the rubric, where you can find definitions for those literary devices and the ones that you should focus on. Um, so I just used the same passage. Uh, I'm a giant surrounded by ants. Uh, and then the prompt is this passage has an example of, here are the four choices, and here's my answer. It's a metaphor. Last section, which is part six, is vocab and context. Most of you have already chosen the five words. You can use those five. All you're going to do is rewrite the sentence as it appears in the text. So capitalize the word that is the vocab or challenge word. Um, you're going to keep this sentence here, read the following passage, and decide the best meaning for the capitalized word. And then you're going to come up with four plausible choices. Usually you have two that are close and two that are kind of the opposite meaning. Uh, that doesn't mean that your student can only read this sentence in order to find the, the meaning in context um, because this is this would be a close reading so they would be allowed to use their books. They can look at the sentences before and after as well. Um, and so you're going to do 10 of those. So most of you already have five. You need to go and find another five. Again, I want them to go in chronological order by page. So if we started on page you know, five, the next one might be on 10, the next one might be on 15. But again, you want to make sure you're spanning beginning, middle, and with those 10 vocabulary words. Okay. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, post them in the classroom, number one. Because if you have a question, chances are others have the same question. Um, number two, come to Homework Club. I will be giving out library passes for those of you who are going to need to budget your time because this does require the laptop. I do not want this handwritten. I do not want this on a Google Doc. I want it on this form template. That's the only way it will be accepted. Okay, so again, look over this assignment tonight. You can come to class tomorrow. 
with any questions you have about it or you can pose questions to the class.